Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome to this Mass of Wednesday, the 14th week in ordinary time. In this Mass, I will offer prayers for all those who have asked prayers at this time. And this doesn't matter what the situation is with you, whether it's or this virus, people that you care about, marriage, family, finances, one's health, your children, parents, grandparents. I'm just bringing all of those intentions to God and to our Blessed Mother and asking their intercession and intervention. I also want to pray for those who I know that are down with coronavirus, family that I know in New York. I pray for them and pray that God may help them find grace and healing. I need to pray for men and women who wear a nation's uniform. Pray for God's protection, especially those in harm's way. Pray for people here in our hospital who are sick. Pray for God's healing. And pray that God may watch over and protect our nurses and medical staff. My dear friends, I'll invite you to bring your intentions as we offer this Mass. I'd also like to offer today's Mass for a dear friend of mine who is celebrating his 25th anniversary of priestly ordination, Reverend Father Kirin Udeze, that God may bless his ministry and grant him many more fruitful and productive years in the priesthood. Our opening hymn today will be, We Gather Together. We Gather Together. We gather together to ask the Lord's praises. To worship the Father through Jesus' his Son. In this celebration, all sing with jubilation. We are his holy people whose freedom he wants. We are his holy people whose freedom he wants. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, I am so excited to have the opportunity again to celebrate God's love with you. And I pray that this celebration of God's, God's mercy, God's love, God's care, and God's promises will have an impact in your life. And it doesn't matter where you are at this time, that the grace of God may just overwhelm you and, and, and guide you and help you and heal you and heal any place and any area in your life where there's struggle. I mean, just inviting you now to, during this next 30 minutes, surrender to God. Let God be God. Let God take over your life right now. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. I also will offer this Mass for my brother. Saint, his name is Bonaventure. Today is the feast day of Saint Bonaventure. So I pray for him, to God, for God to bless him, and for God to keep him safe and grant him many more um, healthy and joyful years. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are account, counted as Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Woe to Assyria, my rod in anger, my staff in wrath. 
against an impious nation, I sent him. And against a people under my wrath, I order him to seize, plunder, carry off loot, and tread them down like the mud of, of the streets. But this is not what he intends, nor does he have this in mind. Rather, it is in his heart to destroy, to make an end of nations, not a few. For he says, by my own power, I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am shrewd, I have moved the boundaries of peoples, their treasures I have pillaged, and like a great like a giant, I have put down the enthroned. My hand has seized the nest, has seized like a nest the riches of nations. As one take eggs left alone, so I took in all the earth. No one fluttered the wing, or opened the mouth, or tripped. Will the axe boast against him who hews with it? Will the saw exalt itself above him who wields it? As if a rod could sway him who lifts it, or a staff him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, will send among his fat ones leanness, and instead of his glory, they will be, they will be kindling like a kindling of fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, the Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people. Your people, O Lord, they trample down. Your inheritance, they afflict. Widow and stranger, they slay. The fatherless, they murder. The Lord will not abandon his people. And they say, the Lord sees not. The God of Jacob perceives not. Understand, you senseless ones among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? The Lord will not abandon his people. Shall he who shaped the ear not hear, or he who formed the eye not see? Shall he who instructs nations not chastise? He who teaches men knowledge, the Lord will not abandon his people. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor abandon his inheritance. But judgment shall again be justice, and all the upright of heart shall follow it. The Lord will not abandon his people. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven on earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the child life. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone the Son wishes to reveal him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will, I'm inviting you to reflect with me from the Gospel reading. Jesus opens this reading with a prayer. It's a prayer he exclaimed so it was in the context of praying that he said these words to the Father. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. 
For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned. Now, Jesus is not here castigating wise people. He is not condemning being wise as though that was something wrong with being wise. He is not saying if you are knowledgeable, there's something wrong with you. No, that's not what he's saying here. He's not saying if you were learned, somehow you are condemned. No. Because after all, the, first, the three uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit all speak to wisdom and understanding and knowledge. So the Holy Spirit gives us three gifts that all have to do with wisdom and being learned. So it's wisdom, it's understanding, and it's knowledge. So Jesus is not here by any means castigating knowledge or wisdom. So when he says, I praise you, Father, for hiding these things from the learned, from the wise and the learned, he's not saying there's something wrong with the wise and the learned. In case you are seeking to be wise, seeking to understand, seeking to know, that's okay, that's a great thing to do. But what the Lord is castigating here, what the Lord is condemning here, what he undermines here is the arrogance that comes with those who think they know so much that they are no longer teachable. Now, think about your 16-year-old. Think about your 17-year-old. Even think about your 12-year-old. Or think about yourself when you were at that age. How much you thought you know or you knew. Your parents couldn't even tell you anything because you believed they were old school. You knew better than they ever did. They couldn't even advise you or provide counsel because you knew it all. Now, that also contributes to the fact that too many of our children and too many people who have gone to school undermine religion because they think, you know what, we don't need that. That's just for fools. That's just for uneducated. That's just for the ignorant. Well, I think I would consider myself very educated and very learned. But I still see my dependence, my, my need for God. I still see my dependence on God. But there are so many people who believe just because I have all these degrees, so I no longer need God. God is no longer part of my life or part of my equation. I don't have to depend on him. Now, it is to these people that Jesus refers, where you think you know so much that you think there is nothing else to know. You think you know so much that you believe no one else can tell you anything. Now, if that's how your wisdom or your knowledge or your understanding makes you feel, of course, then you are being addressed here by the Lord. So, the Lord says, God is going to blind. You know, God is going to, you, God is going to blind those, the knowledgeable, the wise, whose knowledge and wisdom have made them fools. Yes, God is going to blind them. That means they do not recognize the principles that God has only because they have worldly wisdom. God, in his word, has laid out the principles for how we conduct and comport ourselves in this earth and enjoy the blessings that God has. And so when you realize people who think they no longer need God, they no longer need religion, they no longer need spirituality, they no longer need anyone, any of this. Yeah, they are the ones who, in their blindness, in their blindness and in their arrogance, will someday wake up and realize how stupid they have been. Now, look with Firebug, it is believed was one of um, the worst it is that you might think about in fact the thing that is often credited to Nietzsche the dead of God was ultimately couched by Faubach who was a professor or a mentor of Nietzsche and Faubach believed that God was dead did not exist until when he was dying and he said he felt something. He felt something horrible. He felt 
fire everywhere around him. And I think it's believed that he said his last words were, if this is hell, if what I feel is hell, then I believe. Now, you don't have to wait until you are at that point, all right, to recognize how stupid and how ignorant you are only because you think you have worldly wisdom and you have all of these degrees and all of these um, certifications. Today, God says to you, if you could only become like a little child, that means open to being taught, open to listening, open to being guided, open to being educated. If you can stay teachable, if you can stay humble, if you can stay amenable. That's why he contrasts these two things. He contrasted these two things. Being wise and learned and being childlike. Being, being childlike means you remain open. You are always praying to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, be my teacher. Lead me, help me understand the principles of human creation. Help me understand my place in the world. Help me understand how I do everything that God has entrusted to me. Just so that the things that I do can bring me to where God has intended for me. So, so childlike, childlikeness here has to do with being open and being teachable, being amenable, amenable being correctable. That's what Jesus wants believers to be like. So, so today we ask for the humility to overcome our ignorance, also our arrogance. We ask for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, to teach us and to lead us right. Because scripture tells us here, says, no one knows the Father or the Son. No one knows the Father. So no one knows what the Father is revealed. No one knows how the Father intends for us to walk in this world. Now, it doesn't matter who you are today. You did not give yourself everything that you didn't even know where you came from. Yeah, your parents took, became pregnant with you. You didn't even know how you started. But there is someone who knew all of that ever before you came into this world. Now, if you think you are so, so um, educated, so learned, so wise, just know there is someone who created and gave you even the brain that you can do all of these things. And it will be arrogant to think you can no longer even listen to that one who knows and sees and has everything under his control. My prayers are that especially as, as believers, we may learn to be humble, especially, especially when we are educated, when we think we're wise, when we think we're learned, that we don't undermine the ignorance and those who don't know enough. We can still learn from those ones. Just maintain an openness to learn no matter what. And seek guidance from the Holy Spirit. He provides us three gifts that have to do with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. May God, who has given us the brain itself, the intellect to learn, make us amenable, make us teachable, make us like children, always open to hear more and to learn more. As always, if you forget anything I said today, don't forget that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise God for his wisdom that is beyond our understanding. When we can ask him for all of our needs because he shares his wisdom with us and uses us for his purpose. For our Pope Francis, the successor of Saint Peter, that he may use the power of the keys wisely according to God's plan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who accept the burden of public office, that the powers of evil may not prevail over them, but that they may remain open to the grace that God gives. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those living with disabilities, especially children and seniors, that they may not be pushed aside, overlooked, or underestimated, but be respected and treated with dignity and value, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may reverence the power of the keys which God entrusts in his wisdom to the pastors of the church and may be open to his spirit as we learn of the principles of God's creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially families that are battling coronavirus, pray for those in critical, health, critical care. Pray for doctors and nurses who care for them and all medical staff. Pray for our police. Pray for our fire department. Pray for emergency responders. Pray for our men and women of the military. Pray for all those who are dedicated to caring at this time, that God may protect and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. I pray for my brother whose feast day is today, St. Bonaventure. I pray for Father Kiran Udeze, who celebrates his 25th anniversary of priesthood, that God may bless them in every good way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. Pray especially for people that we know. Pray and ask that God, in his infinite mercy, may forgive their feelings and grant them rest and bring comfort and peace to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, source of all wisdom, your son entrusted the paths of his, to his church as we offer these prayers, help us to fulfill your plan for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon this, of the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare our glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us a body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
he gave his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant it will be poured for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me with the second acclamation let us proclaim the mystery of our faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death Lord Jesus until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary Mother of God with Blessed Joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and, worship and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. In the water our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to you and to your families, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are still unable to attend us and receive the Eucharist, let us pray for the grace of spiritual comfort. Most gracious Eucharistic Lord, in this Eucharist, you bring us an answer for every request and for every need. In this Eucharist, you bring us life itself. But for all of your children who are still unable to attend us and to participate in this gift of life and grace, we ask, O oh God, for the grace of spiritual communion that you may nourish them spiritually and enrich them in every good way. These graces and favors we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. Having consumed this gift, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effect upon us may always grow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say a prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'll take a moment to express my thanks to all of you who were able to join us today or who will join us at some point later. Pray that God may reveal himself so powerfully to you. But I also pray that you may remain a disciple with an ear to learn, to hear and allow God's spirit lead you to where God has in store for you. He wants to lead, but you have to be willing to be led. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our, our closing hymn, I'd like for us to sing Abba Father. Abba Father. And I'd like to sing verse 1 and verse 2 where we ask God to mold us and to make us. Abba Abba Father, you are the potter, and we are the clay, the work of your hands. Mold us, mold and fashion us into the image of Jesus, your Son. Jesus, your son, more us, more us and fashion us into the image of Jesus, your son, of Jesus, your son.